And starting out um, talking about the atmosphere of Mercury, we just barely started to talk about this topic last time. Um, do, do. So there is no atmosphere to Mercury. So it seems like maybe, you know, okay, then there's nothing to hear about, but we wanna understand why it doesn't. So last time we um, looked at this simulation from FET about the temperature of a gas and its average velocity. And what we found was that for a higher gas temperature, the average molecular speed is higher. So basically just molecules in the gas move faster as they are hotter. And this is encapsulated in this uh, equation. So the average speed is proportional to the square root of the temperature of the gas. So let's work with proportionality ideas on this one. Um, if we want to calculate the actual average velocity on Mercury using this equation, we could do so if we know its surface temperature, which we do, and we have to choose some gas that we're interested in. So this average velocity doesn't apply to all gases. It applies only um, to each one according to their molecular mass. So nitrogen's molecular mass is 28 atomic mass units. Uh, and so therefore, if you plug in Mercury's surface temperature and the molecular mass of nitrogen, then you'll see an average velocity of 0.8 kilometers per second for nitrogen. Um, I'll give you a chance to apply a similar equation later on here. So the reason we care about average velocity is because we're gonna compare it to the escape velocity of the planet. And that will tell us if the atmosphere gets to stay on the planet over time or if it leaks off over time. So we asked this last time, but I'll just go ahead and ask it again. Um, for which of these gases would it have the lowest average velocity? So supposing that our temperature, like the surface temperature of mercury is fixed, um, which one of these molecules would move the slowest? Okay, I'm seeing most votes for five, carbon dioxide, which is the heaviest of the gases listed here. That's right, so a heavier molecule is going to be more sluggish. So lower average speeds for heavier gases. Another question, um, what if the temperature doubles? So if I go from 700 to 1400 Kelvin, how would the average speed of molecules in that atmosphere change? Okay, so I'm seeing the most votes for answers three and four. And I wanna talk about this a little bit. Let me do a whiteboard here. So if I think about just the proportionality of my gas speed, the velocity here, oh, let me get a, some sort of pen color going on. Okay, the velocity is proportional to the square root of temperature divided by molecular mass. So I could write that this way. The velocity is proportional to the square root of T over M. And so if, if what I'm doing is only doubling the temperature, then what I'm really saying is what I wanna know is how does V nu the one with the doubled temperature compared to V old. So how many times larger or smaller is that new speed compared to the old speed? And that's gonna be proportional to the square root of the new speed, well, or sorry, the new speed divided by the old speed. And if I plug in all of my information, the new speed, all I'm doing is doubling that temperature. So instead of T, I would say that's gonna be two T old right, divided by M, which isn't changing. I'm going to be using for the old speed, or sorry, let me do. The old speed is just T old divided by M in my square root. And what I notice is that there's some things that are the same in the numerator and the denominator here. So those things would cancel out. My masses cancel the exact value of that temperature doesn't matter what it was before to what it was after. The only important fact here is that I'm taking the uh, square root of the multiplying by two. So if I simplify all of this, then it is proportional to the square root of two. 
so not to two directly. So if I double the temperature, the gas speed does not double. It increases by the square root of two. All right. So the answer here, oh, sorry, is that it would be, there we go. It would be larger, but it doesn't double. All right, so it increases by the square root of two, which is something like 1.4 and change. Okay, one more question um, coming up on proportionality. So you'll get a chance to practice that idea. Okay, but first I told you that the, um, the reason we care about the average speed is because we are gonna compare it to the escape velocity for the planet. So if I'm on a planet, say Earth, and I want to escape it, like maybe I'm in a rocket ship, I need to have some amount of minimum speed in order to get away from its gravitational pull. And so that speed depends on the mass and of the radius of the body. So for example, um, if I plugged in the mass of Earth here and the radius of Earth here, since this equation has the mass of body relative to Earth, and the radius of body relative to Earth, I would be plugging in one in each case if I'm talking about Earth. And so the escape velocity from Earth is 11.2 kilometers per second. So if I wanna you know, launch a rocket ship, that's how fast it needs to be able to go. So um, it doesn't depend on the mass of the rocket ship. Notice that nowhere in this equation is there any other mass except for the mass of the body that you're trying to escape. So this is pretty interesting. It means that if I'm a rocket ship, I need to be 11.2 kilometers per second in order to escape the earth. Um, but if I'm a gas in the atmosphere, that's also the velocity that I need to escape. So if I apply this to mercury, um, the mass of mercury is 0 0.055 times the mass of earth and the radius of mercury is 0.38 times the radius of earth. So why don't you pull out a calculator or get out a, a you know, your phone or open up a new browser tab and see if you can calculate the escape velocity on Mercury. All right, so now I'm seeing three answers that are all in convergence, so that seems good. Um, this is also what I got. So if we plug in Mercury's mass and radius, uh, mass divided by radius, take the square root of that and then multiply by 11.2, we get 4.2 kilometers per second. So remember Earth's escape velocity was 11.2 kilometers per second. Mercury's is much lower, 4.2 kilometers per second. Okay, so again, um, considering the proportionality here, just looking at the proportionality of this equation, which of these planets has the um, smaller escape velocity? If there was a new planet that had the same radius as Earth, but only half of Earth's mass. Okay, I'm seeing the most votes for two. The new planet has the smaller escape velocity. And that's exactly right. So if I reduce the mass, then that is going to reduce the numerator inside my square root there. Um, so it'll have a smaller um, overall escape velocity. So it's easier to escape from a less massive planet because the less massive planet has a smaller gravitational pull. Okay, so now coming back to this idea of how does this connect to Mercury's atmosphere? Well, if I have the temperature, if I know the temperature of my um, mercury surface, then that will give me the average speed of molecules in the atmosphere. And if I know the escape velocity, that's the minimum velocity I need to escape the planet. Um, if I compare those two numbers, then I'll know whether or not the gas escapes over time or if it stays put. So um, specifically, the average velocity means that some molecules will move much faster than the average. Those are the ones that are most likely to exceed the escape velocity. So it's not as if all of the gases are moving at an identical speed and therefore all of a certain kind of gas will escape. Uh, instead, only the fastest molecules will generally escape if they are above that escape velocity. So there's a kind of a rule of thumb that um, astronomers use to decide whether or not the average velocity is high enough for some of the molecules to achieve escape velocity. And that rule of thumb is this, if the average velocity times six is larger than the escape speed, then over the history of the solar system, that molecule will have had a chance to leak out of the atmosphere. So this rule of thumb is specific to our solar system because it is specific to the time that has, uh, there has been for the atmosphere to escape. 
So basically the question is, has an atmosphere had a chance to escape or should we expect it to be retained? And this is the rule of thumb that lets us know. Okay, so I wrote this on the next slide. So six times the average speed should be greater than the escape velocity. And that will lead to the molecule not being in the atmosphere. So applying this rule, we calculated the average speed of nitrogen on Mercury is 0.8 kilometers per second. The escape velocity is 4.2 kilometers per second. So would you expect to see nitrogen on Mercury today with these numbers in mind? Yep, exactly. So even though the average speed is smaller than the escape velocity, some of the molecules will be moving faster than that. So if I look at the speed of molecules in the atmosphere, um, some of them have a high speed. This will be like the number of molecules at that speed. Um, it looks something like this, where your average speed is, well, actually probably somewhere like over here. Um, but some of your molecules are going to be going slower than that speed, but it'll be a smaller number. This should actually be, sorry, speed. This should be number of molecules. I'm labeling my axes backwards. So the average speed will be somewhere within that distribution. Some molecules will be moving faster than that speed, and some molecules will be moving slower. The ones that are moving faster, those are going to be the ones that escape. The ones moving slower will hang around. Um, yeah, so our rule of thumb is if six times the average speed, in this case, that would be 4.8 kilometers per second, is greater than the escape speed, in this case, 4.2 then that particular kind of molecule would escape. So therefore, for this question, we would not expect to see nitrogen on mercury today, um, simply because that 4.8 kilometers per second is greater than that 4.2 kilometer per second escape speed. Awesome. So um, here's exactly what that would look like if we write out the math. So new question for you. Um, is it more probable for molecules to escape from uh, if they are heavy or light, or does it not matter? Okay, I'm seeing most votes for two. Um, escape is more probable for light molecules, and that's exactly right. So again, if I use my average velocity formula, then I notice that the molecular mass is in the denominator. And so if I make that smaller, the whole fraction gets larger as a result, right? Like five over one is a bigger number than five over two. So that means that lighter molecules are more likely to escape. And you can think of this intuitively as well. Um, we already established earlier that heavy molecules move slower at the same temperature than lighter molecules do. So at a given temperature, the heavy molecules are gonna be slower, more sluggish. The lighter molecules are gonna be able to zip around faster and escape. So again, all else being held equal, let's assume that I have one type of molecule, say nitrogen, and one surface temperature. In that situation, would escape be more likely from less massive, more massive planet, or it doesn't matter. And I'm seeing most votes for one, less massive planets. And that's exactly right. Um, why is that the case? Well, now if we look at our escape velocity formula, so remember we're using two formula, one for average speed of gas, one for escape velocity. The escape velocity formula tells us that the mass of the body is in the numerator. So if I make that um, smaller, then I make the escape speed smaller too. And it's gonna be easier to escape if there is a lower escape speed. All right, so less massive planets, don't have as strong of gravity, it's easier to escape them, so they're less likely to hold on to their atmospheres. All right, and I think this is the last one. Uh, holding all else equal again, if we only consider changing the surface temperature, would it be easier to escape from a cooler planet or warmer planet? And I see the most votes for two, that it is most likely on a warmer planet. And that's exactly right. Looking again back at the average speed formula, the gas temperature is in the numerator. And therefore, the hotter the planet is, the faster molecules will be moving on average. And so the more likely that some of them will exceed the escape speed. OK, so if we put this all together, we can understand why Mercury has no atmosphere. Um, number one, it has a low mass, so it has low gravity. Number two, it has a really high surface temperature on the side facing the sun. And so 
when you know that side is facing the sun, um, then it's going to be really hot. Molecules will move quickly. So coming back to our FET simulation, right? Um, those gases move quickly, and so therefore they can escape. Um, so mercury, any any um, initial atmosphere that it had after it was formed, that has already escaped into space and it's gone. But there is some gas around mercury. We don't consider it an atmosphere. We consider it an exosphere because it's generated in a different way than an atmosphere. So basically, the solar wind, this is a stream of charged particles that comes off of the sun. It smashes into mercury and chips off little bits of its surface. Um, small collisions with meteors can do the same thing. And so that exosphere is made of little bits that are chipped off from the surface, mostly sodium and oxygen. And it has a very um, low atmospheric pressure. So if you compare it to the Earth's, which has what we define as one atmosphere worth of pressure, um, the exosphere of Mercury has a pressure of 10 to the minus 14. So it's one 100 trillionth as small as Earth's atmospheric pressure. So I hope that illustrates one reason why we don't call this an atmosphere. Um, that exosphere kind of streams into space and it makes Mercury have a kind of a comet-like tail pointing away from the sun. All right, so that's Mercury's lack of atmosphere. Um, the reason that I developed this idea so vigorously here is because we're gonna apply it to Venus's atmosphere as well. All right. Um, the moon has an exosphere as well from, for the same reasons, and it's even lower. So that's it for the full picture of Mercury versus the moon. They are also similar in this regard, that they have no atmosphere and a tiny, tiny exosphere. 